Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, is it possible to have this sincerity and siddiqiyya heart and then lose it? You know, if you're not sincere to love, love is very sensitive and it will be tested, right? That which you love, always have to keep it with honour and respect. Even in the face of any type of difficulty, testing and shaykhs they speak from an experience that people can't imagine. They can't speak about it because it comes against the talk that we just gave. That they have been betrayed, they have been put through horrific testing by their superiors. But they're truthful to their love, they keep the dignity, the way and the honour. And they put into their heart to not let that love move. And that is by request of Prophet <laughs> If they can keep that love through all their testing, then they enter through the gate of the Siddiqs and they become sadiq, truthful. Not the one who claims, oh I'm truthful, I pray, I'm, I'm truthful, I don't uh, lie. No, the real, the greater truth is with love. And their love don't change, they don't sit and backbite the shaykh, they don't sit and backbite truthful people, they don't get in groups and, and start to conspire all of these horrific characteristics. And then they think when they pray Allah is like, oh impressed? That's like the examples I keep giving you that they were slaughtering Imam Hussain and they stopped, prayed Asr. What kind of brain somebody has? That you're calling azan and slaughtering the family of Prophet where was your truthfulness to the love of Prophet Even if Imam Hussain kind of hit you in the head with a stick, you say, Alhamdulillah this is from Prophet How you turned around and you went, you made your salat to who, to for, for what? It counted for Allah or the people are hallucinating, thinking, oh Allah's counting this salat. And then Allah is closing his eyes to slaughtering the entire family of Prophet No, so people doing that now in dunya, they sit together, talk bad against Ahlul Bayt and shaykhs and ulama and then they go on, it's zor time. So the great Siddiqs are giving an advice for the days that come. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. If you want your cane to have power, then you have to have good character because then Prophet sends us to support you. And we support with a mighty support. The nation is in immense might of Allah That which sahaba comes with a ring when you have good character. So these are, these are immense realities and gifts to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad And what, what they require? Good character, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. During the muraqaba, when do we know when to leave the presence of the shaykh? Yeah, after a few minutes you did the muraqaba and you close it off and ask the permission to leave and not to spend too much time, just enough to do the awrah, to do the meditation, the basic pra practices. Otherwise, then you drift off and, and become more of the illusions. So just a short period of time and ask also to enter into the oceans of power. I want to feel the energy and to enter the oceans of energy.
inşallah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so so much for your immense and wise teachings. Can you please guide and should we follow any kind of structure and priority learning Naqshbandi knowledge? Thank you in advance. Sure, watch the videos. As many as you can a day, watch the videos, bring yourself up to speed. Open up the app, we have an app on what to recite daily, do the daily recitations. There's a daily uh, etiquette to recite every day, that has to be recited every day. Three shahada, seven day istighfar and it's called the… under the du'a it's called the awrad, the daily awrad. If you have extra time then in your salah you have uh, things to recite at uh, fajr, you have things to recite at zuhr. If you have the time at asr and maghrib and… so everything is there on the app. Follow that structure and bring yourself up to speed with videos, it's all on YouTube. Instead of binge watching Netflix, binge watch the YouTube channel. They go through the meditation, watch all the videos. Go through the love of Prophet watch all the videos. So there are people watch two, three videos a day and they quickly come up to speed and they get the energy, the knowledge, the jargon because we speak certain words, somebody coming new and they're just trying to translate these words. Well you don't have to do that only on the live, do that when you're watching the videos. So that you come up to speed, so by the live you're, you're sort of uh, up to date on things, inshaAllah. It shouldn't take more than a few days of watching a, a few hours of videos. So alhamdulillah and that this is something blessed to do versus you know just movies that uh, don't go anywhere and, and put darkness into the heart and eyes of people, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sometimes before a sohbah we are inspired of what seems to be a hint as to what is discussed after zikr. Is this a result of drinking from the shaykh's fountains? After the sohbat you're inspired… Before the sohbah. Before the sohbat of what's going to come? Alhamdulillah. It's coming through the stations that are coming down, so… Keep your connection, keep the practices inshaAllah but don't brag about it because by as soon as you type like that then other people are reading and thinking you're an inspired person. Don't let your ego to make yourself stand out like that, otherwise they close that door. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, so what is the reason for a delayed understanding of soul guidance? When you feel answers come to your soul but it takes time to translate and digest them internally. Better to write what comes uh, as uh, inspiration to your soul, as long as they're good and positive write them until the soul of that person or their, their, their aqal, their mental capacity is able to reach to the same point. So means if you speak on something that you have no background on, it's going to be difficult because it's not wahi. You know for prophecy and prophets it's revelation, they don't have to know the subject, Allah merely makes them to speak it. Ilham and inspiration means you have to have a basis. So you're a computer scientist, you read the haqqaiqs. You're inspired now in the computer science realities of what the shaykh taught. So if things are coming in which you don't have the basis for, you write them down and then you go to the website and try to watch the videos on those subjects. Somebody says, well I got a ba and a ha and I don't know what these are, write that down and then now start studying the, the ilmu huruf because if that's the inspiration coming to you then that's something that you should know. So bring yourself up to speed on those subjects and then you'll be at a point in which to understand and, aha, uh -huh, okay. So if we have an inspiration and we don't understand a scientific, we go and look at the science of things and then we get an understanding of the science because we're not scientists. So we have to go and watch a video on the science and the physical science of what these people are trying to say 
and then match that with the spiritual teachings and the understanding and spirituality. So that's a, a part of the seeking process and the reality of, of uncovering their, their teachings inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Forgive me for my ignorance, is being truthful for love means iman, a faith within faith? Love is, is faith, so definitely it is that and much deeper. <clears throat> And this is a, a love for Divinely Presence. Be truthful to your love for Allah for if He tests you with any type of test you're going to feel difficulty and stinging and He's looking and sensing, well, what are you feeling? You know if tests come many are broken by tests, some become stronger. Those are recruited for higher levels. The ones who are broken then they're broken, they for Prophet You go for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then people come against the sunnah. You mean you run from it, you means you hold it even stronger. It's something unpopular, you don't care because people throw rooks at you doesn't have anything to do with you. So the love will be tested, keeping the sunnah of Prophet will be tested. The ishq that you have that oh, all your family may come against it, not like it, will be tested. Never anyone comes between the love of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad not family, not spouse, not anything of this dunya. All of that is on one side and the only side that counts is, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah Who comes, comes, doesn't come, well ahlan wa sahlan. So you will be tested, it's not simple just our love, that love is going to be tested. Then the shaykhs you'll hear sobat you don't like at all. If they register within your heart, your heart going negative, you're not doing good on your testing. So everything, everything, love has to be tested, love has to be tested to know it's true. The one who failed that is, is an outright failure because they talk bad, they go walk around and conspire and they backbite and they slander and the, these things and already that's a student who's failed. But the ones whom are trying to excel means they keep their loyalty with love, that they're so honourable in their character of love that they're now being recruited to be sadiq to be truthful servants of Allah This is now showing you their degrees. So the sadiq means that not just somebody in the mosque they call themselves a sadiq but that they're loyal and they've been tested in love and they've been tested in the love of their shaykhs, the love of Prophet the love of Allah and they come out truthful and, and as a result of their truthfulness Allah grants them an honour and another honour for dunya. But honor in the heavens that the heavens honors them and keeps their company, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Please forgive our ignorance. Uh, you mentioned last night that awliya are awtads. Can you please grant us more understanding from the reality of awtad for north, east, south, and west? There are different categories of awliya. But the different categories of awliya, one category of them they're like pegs, wajibanan awtadan, they're like mountains and pegs. As a result of where they are they stabilize, <clears throat> means that Allah their spirituality of those awliya is so strong that they stabilize a region from its shaking and difficulties. No matter what shaitan plans as a result of that soul being there, Allah's plan is better. So they are like a, the walking software. Somebody may try to hack the software, shaitan is a hacker. 
So anytime you hear plans on the news of this, 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 this means these are hackers trying to hack Allah's plan. And they say that these are going to be the coordinates of this world, this is what we're going to do with this world, this is going to happen, those are hackers. And that's when Allah just said, they plan but Allah's plan is superior. So it means by virtue of the souls of these, reality of these souls, these saintly souls, Allah is doing many things through their light. So one category are like mountains, they stabilize a region, an area and by virtue of their presence rain comes, sustenance comes, vegetation comes because it's attracted to that light. So this is a immense reality. We're talking and we talked before that people have to understand that these lights and the reality of souls. In the old times they would tell you a story of a shaykh went out into the woods and began 40 days of seclusion. How many of them died? Because you go out into the woods, you sit down, you have a tasbih and begin to make your zikr. Anyone want a simple practice, go into the backyard and, and sit there for a few hours. Most people their energy will actually attract the animal kingdom because the animal kingdom is very pure. That animal kingdom will pick up the energy of the servant in that garden and in that forest and direct itself to attack. So all the ants come, the snakes come, the crawling come, all these creatures until the fox comes, the wolf come. And they'll come to eat the person, bite them, attack them because they don't like the energy of that person. So these realities are not something that somebody says they're truthful by their tongue because they masjid people, oh he's truthful, he's truthful, we went for hajj, he's, oh he's a very truthful person. But animals are pure, right? So they determine the purity of somebody because of the vibration and a peaceful vibration upon that insan. So then these awliya whom were ready for that level when they would go out and begin to do their zikr, creation came to them just to do zikr with them. And these animals would be circled around them doing zikr with them in their languages and in their way. And if they were in need of something to eat the deer would come and give them from a milk. Means that the animal kingdom has a way of showing us whose energy is actually pure and impure because they're taslim, they're, they're masoom, they're pure. So when we watch animals and how they interact with people is very important in this way of understanding. So it means that's why the Siddiq is not the one whom is truthful by his tongue saying he's truthful. Because he brings everybody a tea and everyone says, oh Masha, it was a very truthful nice guy he brought tea for the shaykh. No but it's the one whom their vibration and their character is so truthful. And that's why the animal kingdom then are attracted to that servant and they come near them. So then this Allah has the signs on the horizon and upon ourselves. So then very, very spiritual people are drawn to nature because nature has a more pure energy. So when they go amongst nature because of their purity the animals come around them, birds and squirrels and creatures come around them because they want the vibration of that individual. But you can go to a park with somebody who comes up like he's so nice and all of a sudden the creature is growling at them. <laughs> And it's like the guy, he's like he's pretending to be nice but that creature senses something very different. So that's that, if we understood that just from the animal kingdom, Allah is just saying, okay for insan they should kind of pick that up. That this is not about what you say you are but act how you are. And that's why the testing then goes deep and deep and deep, you have to be tested with love. 
you have to have endured every type of trial when 20 people want to come against your shaykh and you stay loyal to it, you stay with the love of it. They want to come against your Prophet and you stay loyal with it. You don't think they came against, well these, these uh, will be people stop this, stop that, stop this. No, for 30 years we're not stopping anything. So means that is going to be continuous, continuous until Allah grants that heart to be truthful and they're truthful with their love. Their heart is sincere, if a heart is sincere of course then their salah is going to be sincere because the heart will then make the hands to be truthful because you're taking command from heart. If the heart is clean and pure and Allah resides within the heart, the heart will tell the hands, don't do that and the hands will uh, subject themselves to the heart. The heart will tell the mouth, stop speaking like that, immediately they become silence. But the one whom heart is corrupt, their hands can lie to you all sorts of secrets, all sorts of tales and that's why Allah and is directing us, no, no, fix the qalb. The tariqah comes is fix the heart, fix the heart. So what resides within the heart is love. Make your love to be true, to be clean, to be pure, to be sincere. You don't speak bad, you don't talk bad, you don't gossip about things, you don't backbite about people. And as a result the heart becomes true and will make all of the faculties to be true. The animal kingdom will come to be around that servant, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, the so-called scientists are claiming that quantum technology can manipulate events through certain energy patterns. Does this rea reality relate in any way to repetitive zikr or zikr patterns? Yeah, I think we have uh, entire talks on sound. <clears throat> so energy and sound, we said is everything. We have talks on the sound, the vibration. Everything is manifesting based on a sound. If you alter the sound, you can affect the manifestation. So they know that, that's why they have very bad songs on the radio and they play at a specific frequency to destroy your form, to corrupt your ears and kill the heart. So of course then the zikr is from heavens, the language is from heavens. The language that we use on dunya is from Jahannam. Every word is, is a curse, every word is, a, is meaning something different. Good morning, right? Morning is something you do from a state of death. So it's not salams, it's not peace and it's not praising Allah But what can you do? This is the language that you know. But once you know it then you're less likely to fall into the trap of the language. So it's casting all sorts of negative energies, hell oh, you're putting upon somebody hell. So all, all these words then have its, its deep reality. And people say, oh Shaykh this is not true, no it's very true because people just don't see it anymore because they have an ignorance and a veil over their eyes and their ears. But that's why then the heavenly language came with all sorts of glorification. So you praise Allah when you wake up, SubhanAllah that Allah has made me to rise. So all the du'as from Prophet were all immense glorifications, why? To counter what the world that we live in and the negativity that we live in, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, today's sohbah really hit my heart in a very different and powerful way that I've never experienced before. May Allah bless you eternally. Thank you, Allah bless you, alhamdulillah. Bless us all, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa What do we do when our parents say they will cut 
off the contact if we keep this way. <laughs> yeah. And don't let your parents know that you're keeping this way. Yeah. What are you going to do if you're too young and uh, you know you, you try to hide it so that not to aggravate your family and, and parents. Um, uh, yeah, that becomes uh, everyone's individual struggle. You don't assume that everybody uh, came this way with uh, you know like a parade when the astronauts landed and they had a parade on New York on 5th Avenue, Woo! you think that everybody came this way with that or everyone's family attacked them and everyone's community attacked them and all their uncles say, well you have to look like this now, they don't want to ever invite you again. So th this is the way. So go back and listen to the talks on Sayyidina Yusuf salam, and that the, the way is to be thrown in a well, then from the well you're in, injured and in difficulty. Then you'll be taken out as a captive, a Prophet of Allah was enslaved and sold in the marketplace. So it means that the, the path was not supposed to be something easy and a parade and everyone congratulated you for accepting the tariqah, mashaAllah, mashaAllah, but it was everyone was going to attack you. How much of that you can take and how polite you can be and hide it and everybody is unique to their own home and to their environment. But it wasn't ever going to be easy and that is again what we just talked about love. If you love it then you try to keep yourself loyal to it without offending and harming and bothering other people and then they should understand that and you know everybody has their, their own struggle and how they're going to deal with their struggle inshaAllah. But everybody has it difficult so nobody's got in here with the parade, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what are the realities uh, of the 40 Abdal of Sham? Very good, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, they're very good realities that <laughs> they can be. These are different categories. Some awliya can be in multiple categories. But the, yeah, they're, they're, they are the 40 substitutes in which they have realities that can appear in many places at the same time and that they're, they're dispensed on this earth to relieve difficulties, to, to do what Allah wants them to do. So they can be sitting in one place and they're sold and sent somewhere else to protect a group of people from difficulty. So their soul has many different abilities of which they may know themselves as an abdal or may not know themselves yet as an abdal. But the category are the 40 substitutes in which they'll be sent around like a sci-fi movie they're doing different things at different times. And they have an imam for them and that imam dispenses with what and where they're supposed to go. So Shaykh Dagestani was describing at one time that he was often sent by Mawlana Sharaf al to do different things. That when people were sick with TB he was sent somewhere to give horse meat as a remedy for somebody who was very important but was sick. And he appeared with the power of Bismillah Rahman Rahim move with Haggat al Tai and appeared in that realm with those people to help them. So that, that reality is, 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 is ever present but more hidden. So alhamdulillah the nation is not around. That's why when in difficulty that's why our, our zikr is reciting the madad. That when in difficulty there is a, a madad for asking for the support of awliyaullah. Ya rijalullah inna wa bi awlillah wa qunna awlina nabi athadna nabi fadlillah. That asking for the support of only Allah that I'm in difficulty and grant me your, your, your nazar and support. So there are different categories that, that are their nature to support and they can relieve somebody of a difficulty, take them out of hardship, of harm uh, at a faster than the speed of thought they can move. So alhamdulillah the nation is not alone what's important is the nation is filled, filled with immense uh, izzat of Allah izzat and might of Allah 
for his beloved uh, nation of Sayyidina Muhammad But it requires to do the madad, have good character and, and to keep the way of ishq and muhabbat inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, when battling the inner desires that emanate from the heart, it seems to be an impossible to defeat. How to help? Yes, it is impossible to defeat. That's why the, the madad is that you have to make the madad with the shaykhs and make the connection with their association and that their energy to enter, no one person can clean themselves otherwise you wouldn't have had that situation to begin with. So it's not something that you can operate on yourself and clean your heart, it's that you have to have a very strong madad in which you died and they appeared within you. So if you watch the matrix that's a, an understanding for madad. So the first couple, not the last ones became very vulgar but the first ones and second one was all about madad. That you're entering into a realm, you want to know that uh, this life that you live is an illusion, well then get out of it. So make yourself to reach death before you die and become nothing, become nothing, become nothing until the reality can become strong within the person. The reality then is that madad and support begins to enter and you begin to vanish until they appear. So he was running, running, running until he just decided, eh, they're gonna shoot at him, he's not running anymore, he's not going to run from his fears. As a result the bullet came and stopped. As soon as it stopped he saw the binary code, means he got into the system, into the matrix. So the matrix is based on fear, as long as you run with fear then it's controlling you, dunya is controlling you. As soon as you do your madad and support and connection because now you feel you have a connection with the world of light, without that you know you're alone. But when you have the connection with the world of light and that their energy comes through you, they have the ability to stop these difficulties, they have the ability to stop the, the bad character within the heart. That's on the whole system is based on the, the madad and the meditation inshaAllah. But people who want to do things on their own and clean themselves is impossible. Otherwise how'd you get in the place in that situation in the first place? It's designed by Allah for us to want to surrender ourselves and ask for support. As a result of surrendering the self and asking for support, they're giving back their will to Allah and then that light comes to support and the nafs of that person inshaAllah goes down and the support enters. That's when you would see in the matrix towards the end that he, every time he was fighting he was able to multiply himself because his reality comes out and his reality can be as many as Allah wants. But when you're just yourself with your nafs it's just you. But in the wave reality of being nothing they can come out as six people, ten people, hundred people because the reality of the wave is infinite. So it has a very deep, deep reality but people are content in remaining a, a particle instead of reaching the wave. The wave reality requires that you be nothing. So the path is based on effacing and I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.